Hey everybody, how you doing? Into Weapons back again with you. I have a Wasser update video for you today. I had a chance to go back and clean all the parts up. There was a tremendous amount of cosmoline all over the inside of this weapon, so I had to uh, kind of do a real deep, thorough cleanup before I was able to even get it out to the range and do a test function on it. Uh, so what I did, and what I'm going to kind of do here, guys, is just reassemble the rifle as I talk and kind of just do, like I said, an update video for you here. But uh, what I did is I ended up taking out the, uh, all the pieces and parts, including the trigger group and all that good stuff. Really got it down to its bare minimum, its skeleton stock here. Uh, I got all the trigger group assembly and everything there waiting to be put back together. Um, so it really broke down to its basic elements. I did a mineral spirits bath on all of the metal parts, including the magazine. I broke this down and did that as well. This thing was extremely packed with cosmoline on the inside like, like most magazines are. And that stuff is just sticky, nasty stuff. I just hate dealing with that stuff like I'm sure most of you do, but uh, it's just something you got to deal with. But uh, after the mineral spirits, what I did is I went back and I just kind of uh, used water to rinse down the pieces real good. Uh, the, the pieces like this here, the receiver and the barrel, as well as this uh, upper gas tube, since it's got some spots where you're really not able to get in and uh, do a good thorough uh, wipe down after you put water on it, because obviously it's metal, you want to wipe it down real good. Uh, what I did is I uh, took a, a squirt of WD-40 and just squirted the whole thing down here, squirted this thing all down real good. Uh, what WD-40 will do is seep into all those places where that water is and it'll help evaporate and dissipate that water. Um, or at least that's what I've read and it works for, uh, worked pretty well so far for me. Uh, and then what I did is I took these two pieces and I set them out on a pan in the sun just to help uh, evaporate some of that stuff a little bit quicker. Uh, as this stuff was sitting out in the yard evaporating and letting that WD-40 work, I took the rest of these pieces down here, uh, used my solvents like normal and scrubbed them down, wiped them down, and then used a really, um, really strong layer of oil and lubricant down there with my uh, Hops Number 9 lubricating oil. Uh, that stuff works really well. I let it just kind of sit here and penetrate for a few days and let that oil do its magic, really kind of get into that metal surface and uh, do a good protective layer on here. Uh, it, after that was done with all those pieces, I came back down with the, the two main pieces and did exactly the same thing. Just really cleaned it down well. You can see in here, hopefully, with the, the light, and it is uh, clean as a whistle, guys. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a wasser this clean before. Probably cleaner than it's ever been in its entire life. So, uh, We did a real good job here. What we're going to do is just go ahead and do a real quick reassembly. Um, I'll kind of do this on camera. Hopefully, I don't have to run into too many snags where I, I hold up too much of your time. But uh, we'll go ahead and start with the lower handguard here, just a standard lower handguard. We're going to um, eventually replace this, obviously, but for the time being, during the function test, I kind of do need that. So uh, we'll go ahead and stick this back on. And my uh, intent here is to get out to the range sometime here in the near future and get a uh, range video of this guy. See, is what I'm talking about. We're always going to run into these little snakes here where the things don't go on as quickly as they should and things get difficult for me and take up too much of your time. But I noticed on this washer everything is real tight. After I did get all the, the solvents and stuff out of it, it kind of loosened things up. But otherwise, this uh, washer has a real nice tight fit on all the pieces and parts. I really didn't have to... Uh, I should say I had to use a lot of these tools just to kind of pound things into place and get them apart. But that's a good thing after all. It's uh, If you got a nice tight washer, that's generally a good thing. So uh, The upper handguard, I'm not going to replace the wood on it. Uh, it's just kind of a pain in the ass to get them on and off. They have to twist on and you're just putting a lot of pressure on that wood where you really don't need to. I don't really need it on here to do a, a function test, so uh, we're just going to leave it off for the time being. I do have uh, the plan for the build pretty much done, guys. And you'll have to excuse me, it's going to take a little bit longer than the Vepper build did originally. Just because uh, I don't have a big chunk of cash sitting around like I did with the Vepper build where I could order the parts as I please. So this build is going to take a little bit more time. Um, and I do plan on putting a real nice uh, Midwest Industries Palm upper handguard on here. The optic specific one with a probably a Burris Fast Fire 3. So like I said, I have been working on the planning phase of this build uh, for quite some time. So... Uh, stay tuned, we should have some of those pieces and parts coming in, and hopefully a couple. Uh, actually, we'll put this on for the time being, we won't screw it in though. Um, at this point, I think what we'll do, guys, is we'll put our trigger guard assembly together, or player control group, I should say, and we'll pull out the gun place here. 
usually makes things a little easier to work with. And maybe what I can do too is try to get you guys a closer, better up view of how I'm doing this fire control group. I apologize if it's not the best angle or position, but you'll get kind of the point of it. And I did go ahead and buy one of these Tapco AK retaining plates. And typically, you know, this would probably be considered an upgrade video, but ultimately now after having that failure of my SLR 106 UR pistol uh, with the Shepherd's hook, I really don't consider this an upgrade. I think this is just a mandatory replacement part now. So this will be replacing the original Shepherd's hook that I have in here, and I'll show you what they had in here originally. There we go. You can see just a little piece of metal and obviously something like this is going to be a, a much better shepherd's hook and um, hold your fire control group in there much better. So uh, we'll go ahead and work on this trigger assembly here and see if we can get this thing reinstalled. And this spring is kind of already warped out here so we'll have to do our best to get it in as best as possible. And uh, these fire control groups on the wasters are G2 triggers so eventually what I'll end up doing is going back through here and doing a, a trigger job on it polishing some of the surfaces things of that nature just to give it a more crisp clean trigger pull and the trick here is going to be getting that spring and I'll maybe see if I can tilt this a little bit for you guys so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better but uh, just kind of twisting that hammer there so you can get that spring lined up, pushed into place. And then we're going to take our pin to hold this guy in and slide that right through. See if I can find the hole without looking. There we go. I'm just sliding that pin through to the, the hammer here, all the way through making sure my spring initially is just positioned well and as you can see I used a zip tie here just to hold these springs up in place and I'm going to try to get you guys a little bit better view here hold on one second in fact I'll just stop it and we'll come back there we go guys that's probably a little bit better of a view for you I apologize I'm not a professional videographer here I never you know I claim to be so bear with me I'm doing the best I can uh, the next thing we'll put in here is the uh, trigger assembly here and uh, we'll go ahead and use the pin here again to put that in. And that's pretty much just drop in. Again, with these G2 Tapco triggers, everything is, uh, they have a little collar here that holds everything together. So that's kind of nice. Makes it a little easier to get everything back together. It's just really kind of drop right in. Replace the pin there. We can get the pin through here. Come on, buddy. It's right there. There we go. There we go. Everything looks good there. Now what you should be able to do here is uh, we'll go ahead and uh, install our safety selector. And those are pretty straightforward. You just kind of slide them in. I think that's a little bit off camera for you guys. But uh, maybe what I'll do is zoom out a little bit here because that's going to work in conjunction with our shepherd's hook. So as you can see, it just goes right in that hole. I'm going to take my uh, new Tapco retaining plate here and what we'll need to do is just use a flathead screwdriver to kind of push this pin aside just a little bit. Make sure our pin is all the way seated, our drive pin is all the way seated. Otherwise you won't have a place to grab. So we're going to go ahead and stick that in right away. And then down, making sure that we're on the pin. Just kind of pushing it into place real tight. You'll kind of hear a snap as you get on there on this... Uh, trigger group back here what you do is it just kind of rests right over the top of it Oop. and again we're just going to have to kind of make sure things line up here looks like everything's coming together real nice we'll reinstall our safety selector which kind of holds everything together and that'll kind of tell you if your tapical retaining plates in the right position or not mine may not be here These are the kind of snags that you don't generally think what you're going to run into when you're doing a reassembly here, but it doesn't look like these things are lining up too good. And you really just want to make sure that, that this Tapco G2 retaining plate is uh, holding those pins. That's really the, 
the main intent here. So I'm going to go off camera here, guys, so I don't waste a whole lot of time with you guys on camera and kind of figure this out, and I'll be back with you shortly. Well, and of course, as soon as I go off camera, it slides right into position with no problem. So we're back, and uh, we got the shepherd's hook in, everything lined up. I uh, just kind of did test just using my um, punch set here to push on these pins, make sure everything is real nice and tight. You shouldn't be able to push them through if the Tapco retaining plate is doing its job. Um, I know with this washer here, I kind of have to play with this trigger just a little bit to get this safety selector into position. There we go. And it uh, looks like everything's holding in there real nice. Um, the Tapco plate is a little bit loose, but it's, it's doing its job, definitely. It's kind of blowing out a little bit, but it uh, looks like everything's nice and tight. We'll definitely have to make sure that everything looks good after our test firing. Now what I'm going to do is just grab my uh, kind of a hook tool here, pick, and uh, we'll remove, whoop, and this spring's already coming off. I don't want to hit my finger as I'm doing this. Uh, we'll remove our twisty tie that's holding these springs in place. Making sure your fingers are kind of clear of it. That way if it's loose it doesn't come flipping out on you. And uh, we'll put these springs back into position just by lowering them down onto the belt there, onto the trigger, trigger bars, whatever the hell they're called. Just like that. And uh, it should be, minus any stupid mistakes I made, fully reassembled on the trigger group. We'll just go ahead and do a quick function test here. Looks like that works. Release it. Looks like that works. Go ahead and put our safety up. Make sure it doesn't engage. And it looks like the safety's working as it should. That's good. We'll put it back down and oop, test it again. Everything looks like it's working well. The, eight, the tackle retaining plates in, inside doing its position. Again, we got rid of this uh, stupid shepherd's hook piece of wire that uh, could definitely fail at any time out of there. So I'll back us up off here a little bit, guys, and we'll continue on. Alright guys, so it's looking a little bit more like a completed rifle here. We'll go ahead and continue on with the uh, install and I think what we'll start on after this here is the uh, pistol grip and the uh, nut that holds it and uh, I don't think it, there it is. We have the bolt here that puts everything together and we'll just kind of drop this you know, and that may be why I might, did not tighten the uh, screws in on this stock because it is a little bit easier to get this in here without that stock being on here. So we'll go ahead and stick this in here, maybe from the back side. Alright guys, bear with me. This might take a moment of fiddling just to get it in. There we go. I think we got her. And then you got to make sure you put it in the right way, which is tricky with these AKs just because of the angle that sometimes you got to make sure you get right. And I got it wrong. That surprised me. I think that's the right way there. I think we got her, and that's <clears throat> what you need to look for there is just that angle backwards, I think. And then, uh, kind of holding that in place, what I do generally is put this grip back on. And we can slide the right down in there and start twisting it up and hopefully you get some catch on it. It does not look like I am here. I'm going to push harder and screw on this thing here. I don't know if I got it. I think I do. No, I don't think I do. Let me fiddle with this off camera here real quick guys and we'll come back. Alright, so we got it back on there. Just took a little bit of looking over the side here to make sure I was getting that screw into the, the nut as best as it could there. So it's on. It's definitely solid. So we'll continue on. We can probably put the buttstock into place here now and attach the two screws that hold this into place. These are just Two standard uh, flathead screws, wood screws I may add. One in the back of the receiver. And then we have another for the tang. And the 
looks good there. And we can go ahead and replace some of the basic uh, operating mechanisms that I'm sure most of you are familiar with with an AK. And just take a look at that, guys. I mean, nice and shiny and oily. Everything looks so clean. I love that look on a gun, guys. I love that look. Nice, clean firearm always gets me going. Of course, a dirty one is always fun, too. Put the bolt back there. Get the recoil spring in. Place the dust cover. There we go. Place our safety. Check operation. It looks good there. And the very last thing here, guys, is just to uh, replace this muzzle brake, which, God, was a bear to get off. Super tight. I was cranking on it and cranking on it and thought you know, this thing was spot welded or something. I just couldn't see any spot weld on it. But finally, I put it in a vise and took a pliers and really cranked at her, and it came off, thankfully. But it was just really super tight, and I think maybe what they did is they just had it over-tightened. So I'm going to keep it just a little bit looser. And that's it. Obviously, it doesn't have that upper hand guard. We talked about that, but now we can get it out to the range, do some function testing. Make sure everything's working. All right, guys, stick the magazine in here. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, stay tuned for the range videos. Until next time, guys, take her easy.